In my teens, I used to work at a local restaurant. And the restaurant manager had one of these, the, uh, the lightweight Land Rover. And he turned up one day and on a sunny day and he had all the doors taken off, all the canvas taken off. And it just looked superb and fantastic. And I fell in love with Land Rovers at that point. Um, I do like the other sort of Land Rovers, the other series Land Rovers, but it was the lightweight for me that did it. Maybe it's the angular bodywork uh, or just the fact that it looks so stripped down. It's just, I just love it. So here's one that I'm looking at now and I've got the opportunity to drive, uh, supposing I can fit in the thing, and uh, let's give it a go. First things first, can I fit in? Well, yeah, my knees are under the steering wheel, which is actually slightly surprising because there's not a lot of, mo uh, of room forward and backwards for legs. Um, the steering wheel is rather large. I'm gonna, what's that be? Got to be 18 inch uh, diameter, something like that. But you kind of need that because these big fat knobbly tyres aren't easy to move. And when you're driving, um, you go around a corner, you have to cancel the input. It won't do it itself. It's got no caster. So um, you need a big steering wheel. The, car, the handbrake is a little bit annoying because it's right under my left knee. Um, big gear stick and you've got the other uh, 4x4 controls and, and low ratio um, control levers down there but it's, it's really it's the, it's the front back there's not a lot you can do either because there's a, there's a sort of bulkhead um, right behind the seats. Now in the 1960s the Royal Marine Commandos and the Army um, wanted to find a replacement vehicle that they could use uh, slung underneath the new Wessex helicopters. It, brought about a specification that meant the thing had to be air portable. The, the, the Series 2s and 2As of the time just were, were a little bit too heavy. So Land Rover set about sort of um, stripping things down and, and removing things that weren't necessary to create what they then called or was then called the air portable, the lightweight or also known as the half tonner. Now actually it didn't meet the specification for the weight either until you took the roof, the, the canvas off and, and the doors off uh, and pretty much stripped it down then it was able to be towed underneath and it was used a lot by you know, artillery for, for moving it with, uh, with field guns and the like. So it's produced between 1968 when it was based on the Series 2A platform and then in 1972 it switched to uh, Series 3 platform and then carried on in production until actually until 1984. This particular one is a 1977 example I believe and it was an FFR fitted for radio so it would have been 24 volts with had big boxes on the front wings and uh, massive whip aerials uh, with, uh, with all the kind of radio gear tucked in the back. So uh, I'll give it a go and I don't know how much you're going to hear um, so I'll, I'll have to speak up, I'll have to shout. Last time I did a Land Rover it was a, a Series 1 Land Rover, very early one and the, the, the picture also was, was up and down all over the place so Hopefully it won't be too jerky, but if it is, I apologise now uh, and we'll just get, see how it goes. I'm shutting the window in the hope that you can hear me. The engine is pretty noisy, as is the transmission. Pretty much underneath the floor, there's little to nothing in the way of sound deadening. I don't think I'd want to be driving far in this just because of the dimensions I've got available. But um, it is quite a thing to be able to drive after after wanting one for so long or, or uh, you know, lusting after one for so long. It also fits the, uh, my criteria of what is a proper Land Rover. A proper Land Rover being something that has a spare wheel on the front of the bonnet. So 
not really the right territory for this uh, middle of a middle of a sort of industrial estate. The other thing about these tyres are, though, and again, they're off-road tyres. What I liked about these also was from the outside when you got them whizzing down a runway, for example, or a taxiway, you get that singing noise from the tyres on the concrete or on the tarmac. You also have to, you're constantly putting some steering inputs, constantly making adjustments because it just wants to kind of wander a bit over the road. Whilst you're on the move in this, I don't know, and I'm not sure how much you're, you're going to hear the music either. Now, yeah, perhaps rather stupidly, I've come on a route that's got a lot of speed bumps. You'd think that this would, uh, you'd think that this would deal with speed bumps quite well. It's you know off road and the worst of it, but no, it's rather uh, rather a handful, and it's pretty violent across those bumps. I'm just at a set of traffic lights, so they're just moving the traffic lights at the moment, which is a bit annoying, a bit odd. So I've got a please wait here sign just in front of me that's now being picked up and moved. So I guess I can follow it, right? Oh, I've got a green light up ahead anyway. The air portable is uh, a fair bit narrower as well as the uh, compared to the standard series Land Rovers. Uh, that's quite good. I imagine it'd be brilliant sort of whipping around some country lanes. You've got hardly any width to worry about. Yeah. Well, the downside is this big, the big main gear selector lever. Like reverse is so easy to find, much easier to find than first. But it is quite a long way compared to first, so you just have to make sure you're not going to suddenly leap off at a roundabout or leap off at a junction, go backwards to the car behind. It's got a big red NATO tow hitch on the back of this, which would rather make a mess of most new cars and their, their front sort of radiators and grills and stuff. This particular Land Rover has had uh, sort of previous experience and previous service with the Royal Engineers, the School of Artillery, but I think it's been a private hand since around 1990. Would have been a great shot with a got a Chinook going past. I don't think you can see it out of the window. You probably fit two or three of these in a Chinook. So also, as a teenager, I was uh, I was in the Air Cadets in the Air Training Corps, and they often had these early on in their gliding schools. There's a sort of a tug to take the gliders down up and down the runways, or to uh, pull out the cables and such. So I've got fond memories of these. They've typically been painted yellow, those ones. So I reckon I've lusted after one of these for what, the best part of well, nearly 40 years, possibly. So now that I've had a chance to drive one, 
What do I think? I love how they look. I could probably buy one and sit it on my driveway, well, subject to my wife agreeing. But I could sit it on the driveway and just look at it, because I think they just look glorious. Um, I'm obviously a bit of a fan of sort of wedgy sort of styles and, and folded edges. So, yeah, from that sense, yeah, it's great. And, and this is a particularly good looking one. It's been nicely painted recently. Um, you know, it's not had any sort of obvious modifications that make it look less military. Um, it is what it is. It's pretty raw. And I quite like that about it. I don't think I could drive one of these for maybe more than an hour tops. But um, I'm pleased to have done it. Pleased to have had a go. Will I be bidding on this particular one? Uh, I think it's guided between sort of 10 and 15 thousand pounds, um, which is quite a reasonable price for one. A good price for one that's been done nicely. You can see them done. You can see them for sale. Um, anything from sort of six or seven thousand pounds, or maybe even five thousand pounds upwards. This one's had a fairly recent renovation, I think. And mechanically, it seems great, if a little noisy. Please like, please subscribe, leave me a comment, tell me what you think of these, or if you've got any experience in them, as maybe in the, you're in the military or, or uh, reserve forces, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. That was amazing. That was, that was great.